Keep watch over your breath. Keep watch over your mind, watching the breath. Make sure it stays. Make sure it doesn't wander off. That's the quality of alertness. As John Lee says, it's like a rope over a pulley. You pull one end, then you pull the other end, back and forth, back and forth, watching the breath, watching the mind, watching the breath, and back to the breath again, making sure they stay together. We work with the breath, but the problem is not the breath. The problem is the mind. There's that passage where a man has just recovered from an illness, and the Buddha says, it's important that you remind yourself that even though you may be sick in body, you don't have to be sick in mind. The man is pleased with the teaching. Then he goes to see Sariputta, and Sariputta says, well, do you know what the Buddha meant by that? And the man says, no. So Sariputta explains. It's when you hang on to any of the aggregates, you hang on to your thoughts, you hang on to your perceptions, you hang on to your feelings. You hang on to your body, your consciousness. And as you're trying to hang on, they're going to change. You can't determine how your body is going to react to the virus if it comes in. Some, people, some people's bodies don't react at all. Other people's bodies break down. You don't have any control over that. As long as you hold on to that, and I'll hold on to the perceptions and the thoughts and the feelings that go along with that, you're going to be sick in mind. But even though the illnesses will come to the body, illnesses don't have to come to the mind. So as you sit here meditating and see the mind beginning to hang on to anything that's not related to the breath right now, and so this is where the habit comes from, the habit of getting sick, wandering off and looking for something else, looking for more entertainment, looking for some variety and ending up with some variety, but not necessarily the variety you want. So this is one of the reasons why concentration is such an important part of gaining insight into the mind. It gives you a point of comparison. As long as the thoughts you have and the feelings you have are related to the breath, they're fine. Stick with them. Anything else you can let go. And get used to letting go. There's that story about the monk who came to see Jokunna in the middle of the night. Jokunna was doing walking meditation. The young monk came up and said, I've got these thoughts that have been running through my mind all day, all day, all day, and I can't get rid of them. And Jokunna looked at him and said, you're doing the wrong duty. Turned around went into his hut. Unfortunately, the monk had been studying the Dharma. As soon as he heard the word duty, he thought of the duties of the Four Noble Truths, and he realized he was developing something he should be abandoning. The thoughts were making him suffer, then he was pursuing them. Look to see where they're coming from and let it go. That's the right duty. So anything that comes up that's not related to the breath right now, get used to letting it go, letting it go. There'll come a day when you start letting go of the concentration, but not yet. In the meantime, you've got to hold on. Like those relay chariots in the sutta. You haven't reached the place you want to go yet, so don't get off the chariot. But staying on the chariot keeps you safe. And it'll get you where you want to go. So hang on right here, let go of everything else for the time being. And get used to that habit of seeing something, realizing this is not where I want to be, and letting it go. And that relieves the mind of a lot of its suffering. <laughs>